Hey, let's talk about how to present your work. But first, let's face the ugly truth. The average attention span of humans right now is at the level of a goldfish. It has dropped from 12 seconds to just 8 seconds in like the early 2000s. So it's probably even lower right now. I believe the next social network will probably create clips that are just 3 seconds long because that's gonna be the most that people can handle at a time. We're bombarded by stimuli all the time from every direction and it's really important for you to stand out from the crowd and get noticed. We need constant stimulation, otherwise we feel bored. Most people can't watch a movie right now without reaching for their phone every now and then and checking something. The world has become a mess of forced multitasking to push those dopamine levels higher and higher, and we're addicted to it. In a world like this, you need to compete for the attention of recruiters or clients. Their minds, their brains are running on an autopilot-like filter to quickly filter out whether something is even worth their attention. Now your portfolio, your projects, your case studies, your designs, and even your resume are all content, and that content is competing for attention in a very saturated industry, which means that basically what you do competes for attention against other portfolios, other resumes, other projects, and they are often quite similar. First impression is everything, because if you don't make a good first impression, chances are you'll end up in the maybe pile, and likely nobody will read the case study and even check it out fully. And most people from the maybe pile don't get selected to get the job, and they don't even get invited to an interview. This is why a good presentation of your design work is essential to stand out and to have a bigger chance of actually getting the job or getting the client. In this course, I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques that I used successfully to get clients, to get recruiters to be interested in what I do. These techniques will help your designs and your portfolios and your case studies look more interesting and actually increase your chances of people paying attention. We will focus on three main areas in this mini course. The first one is obvious. We're gonna be making some device mockups and presenting your actual design work in a beautiful, friendly way. But that's not all. Here is a secret on how you can truly stand out. Because those design elements, those design mockups are pretty obvious. A lot of people do that. There are some things that you can do that are gonna make you instantly stand out because almost nobody does them yet. You can use the same visual principles to make other parts of your portfolio and your case study stand out as well. Well, I want to cover a couple of areas in particular, low fidelity wireframes, sketches, and presenting data, both as tables, data tables, and charts and graphs. Because these things are often neglected, and while you have some nice mockups in your case study, you're often ending up with pretty generic and pretty boring or ugly looking additional elements and they can still be presented in a way that's gonna capture the attention of people and captivate them enough to just reach out to you and offer you the job. These three things combined with an engaging case study are gonna make all the difference between getting invited to an interview or being outright rejected or landing in the maybe pile. Okay, let's start with the plan. Before you start adding nice gradients and soft shadows everywhere, we need to create a plan of action. While I believe your case study needs to be very consistent in terms of fonts, colors and overall style, I also believe that each project needs to be actually created on its own and it needs to be tailored to match the theme and the concept of the project. To make it easier, let's divide a typical case study into two main areas. One is a classic breakdown of what you did and why, and this is what I call the first person perspective, because it's all about you. I did this, then I used research to get this idea, and then I modified that, and this is where we're at. There is also a third person approach, like in video games where you're just seeing somebody else do the stuff from behind their backs. And this third person perspective is very interesting because it helps you create a story and stories are really, really engaging. You just need to create a hero and that hero can be a different designer or a user or a group of users but it needs to follow a typical path of a hero. If you choose option two, you need to create a persona but let's not create like a typical templated boring persona that most people do. This is not what we want here. You need to create a narrator and you need to figure out how you want that narrator to tell the story of this case study and what happened and how you arrived at this beautiful final design. 
What you need to make this case study more interesting is a couple of photos of your narrator. And of course, you need to have all the photos to be of the same person because it's just going to break the narrative if there is one person talking about something and then it's a completely different person, you know, down the road. So you need to find a couple of photos. You can use the free stock photo site or you can take your own photos or photos of some of your friends in a couple of different poses. And that's gonna come in handy for the storytelling part. And yes, for the first person approach, you can take photos of yourself. Just make sure that these photos are done in a way that can help you illustrate and drive the narrative. So you can be pointing at something, you can be thinking about something, or as I say, ideating, or you can just be doing anything. Like let's say if you have some research elements that you need to reevaluate because you have no idea what they do, you can have a pose like this. You can use that avatar in combination with some classic comic book style speech bubbles or some modern quotes next to the avatar. Whatever you choose, it needs to be consistent with the product. Then simply use those photos along with the text to create the main narrative. So where you started, where you're going, what happened in the middle and how you know you came up with some additional solutions or additional ideas for the project. And then you wrap up with the final solution and we're all happy. Because case studies have quite a lot of information and a lot of data, it's really good to plan your case study around that data with those elements. So just try to distribute them pretty evenly. You start with the first one that starts to tell the story. And then the last one is probably just almost at the end of the case study. And then you distribute the other three or two in the middle between the content sections and between all the elements that are the main areas of the case study. So if you have more than five, you can create more of those personas or those avatars and just make it more interesting. Let it tell a story, not just have like a too long didn't read block of text. Now there is some photo psychology here to consider as well. If you want to capture more attention, you can have the person in the very first photo on the top of the case study or near the top of the case study look straight at the camera, just like this because obviously then we're gonna focus on the eyes of that person and that's gonna be a very strong emotional connection. Then you can use a simple prehistoric rule of having the avatar look to the side because if somebody is looking to the side in any direction, we naturally follow their gaze. We want to know what they're looking at because it might be something dangerous or it might be something scary or it might be something useful to us. So you can use that rule to have that person look to the side, look at the text that they're saying or at the communication that you want them to basically deliver. So you can place important information to the side or if the person is pointing at it and looking at it, it's gonna be an even stronger impression. And heat map studies show that most of the attention is then placed not on the eyes and the face of the person, but on that text. So that basically drives this whole story forward and keeps people engaged and interested. Of course, having an avatar is just one way, one idea that you can use to make your case studies and portfolios more interesting. And it's really good to not have the same concept in all of your case studies, because then it's going to make your portfolio look boring. But you can experiment, you can just use quotes, you can use a larger titles, you can use a lot of different elements. But if you start with like a story driven concept with those avatars and with some text and with some narrative, it's gonna instantly make it more interesting. And if you combine this with nice UI and nice mockups, you're gonna do really, really good. This has been the first lesson in my upcoming mini course on how to present your work. If you want to present your work even better, get the full course. It's over two hours of content that's tightly packed with information and breakdown of all the techniques that you can use to make your design stand out, including how to create those mockups, how to present your low fidelity gray wireframes, should you do them in pen or paper, or should you do them digitally, how to present data and how to present the entire case study to make it have the most impact. The course releases in late November, so if you're gonna get it before that date, you're gonna get it with a pretty big discount. See you there.